Let's talk one more thing about the local therapy, and I'll go back to you, Dr. Vo, because understandably we know that the Interim 90 radio embolization is not uh, yet uh, approved in Japan. How about Europe? So we can use it. Um, the question is when should we use it and how should we use it? Sure. And we have now three clinical trials which kind of address the, uh, the, the relevance of Y90 in, in HTC and all three trials are negative. So we have two head-to-head -head comparison, which did not show an improvement in overall survival in the pair protocol treated patient group. And we also have the ceramic trial um, reported at ESL, which looked at the combination of sorafenib with Y90. And also this trial was negative. So there was no significant improvement in overall survival, which kind of indicates, and this is also something which is similar to what we have seen in colorectal cancer. So in all clinical trials where we looked at the value of Y19, all of these trials are negative. So shouldn't we use Y90? I think that's also difficult because we have used it for a long time. And I think everybody of us will remember one single patient which had a dramatic response under Y90. Yeah, so there are clearly some patients that do have a benefit. And I think there is also a certain space for the treatment um, with Y90. But I think we really need to be very critical about the use of Y90. Um, I see it more like a salvage treatment or we need to really better define these early patients patients without liver cirrhosis, maybe one uh, single big nodule. I mean, that might be candidates. Um, and this is also something we have seen in the ceramic trial. So I think we have negative trials. I always try to stress this, that the trials are negative. They have not shown superiority. They have not shown non-inferiority. They are negative. Yeah? So we shouldn't use it uncritically. On the other hand, there are certainly some patients that have a benefit. So we have to define in the future where is really the exact place for Y19. Fair, fair, fair. Uh, Richard, like pretty much combining sorafenib with anything being embolization, radio embolization did not work. Are we really missing something or are we really choosing the wrong agent? Should we consider something else to combine with the local therapy or it's not going to work regardless? Well, I, I think we want to design studies based on a strong hypothesis. And I think the initial excitement came out of this idea that you do a chemoembolization, you induce ischemia. Ischemia is a strong driver of VEGF production. Uh, and then you come in with a drug like serafinib that blocks the VEGF receptor, and we should see a benefit. But the important thing, especially when we're looking at overall survival, when we're doing a combination study is you're betting that there's synergy in those two uh, interventions, in this case, TACE and serafinib, versus just the sequential use, right? Because if, if you do TACE and then at progression you get serafinib, uh, the data, I would say, outside of the one study we heard about, the tactic study, uh, that the data strongly supports there's no reason to do it in combination, right? Which raises and goes to the heart of your question, is it just serafinib is not the right drug? But we also did a study that was stopped early with brivinib in this population. And even though the study was stopped early, there were still several hundred patients accrued and there was no strong signal that it, it was going to be better. So I, I think we need a question this hypothesis about ischemia and antiangiogenesis, right? Maybe that's not the way to go. There's some interesting data, and I hate to come back to it all the time, but, you know, immuno-oncology is an interesting area of, of cancer medicine right now. But there was a study from the NCI, Tim Gretton's group did a study with either chemoembolization or radiofrequency ablation, any way to induce tumor damage for patients who actually even have advanced disease. And the idea was that you would release antigens and then use, uh, in this case, it was CTLA-4 blockade, trimalumumab. And they showed very interesting activity. Uh, so maybe that will be the next generation. But it's very hard to design these studies. These are very complex studies. The group of patients very heterogeneous in their outcomes. No, absolutely right. If anything, really, we don't have a good understanding about yet what to combine it is, if we need to combine it with anything. But you're right, at the moment, the high focus is really trying to combine checkpoint inhibitors plus a taste. Uh, 
Will it uh, really work or not? Hard to tell. Will it really carry on to something else like, for example, a triple combination of TACE plus uh, a checkpoint inhibitor plus a TKI? We don't know yet where this is going to take us all together. But nonetheless, it's fascinating that we are rather, uh, uh, instead of what we saw in the SARA study, which is really more of a uh, split between uh, the local advanced disease and metastatic disease and try to see what we can serve for both populations being, for example, the sorafenib versus a Ethereum 90 based. Now we're looking at the ceramic, which is combined them and still did not work. And really we thought it's not going to be divorced, but it, really the marriage is not working either. So we just had to wait and see what's going to happen in that regard.